Let's take the nav tag and let's add a background. We'll add a background color of white. Okay, and I'm just gonna add 20 pixels padding all the way around. And the width of this is gonna be 80%, but that's in, I'm sorry, 80 pixels, but that's in the non-active state. So basically this, when it's active, it's gonna be 350 pixels and it's active to begin with. And we have the class active here. So let's just jump down here real quick and say if it has the active class on it, then let's set the width to 350 pixels like that. All right, and then I just want to center everything here. So the nav will go ahead and display flex. We want to align items to center. And we want to justify the content to the center. And let's actually add a border radius of three pixels. And we're also gonna have a box shadow. So for the X offset, we'll do zero. The Y will do two pixels. The blur will do five pixels. And the color will be RGBA black with a 0.3 transparency. So it just looks like it's slightly coming off the page. Now, when we remove the active class, if I just manually get rid of this here, you can see it goes, it shrinks down. Now I want to add a transition on that. I don't want it to just flick right to, you know, smaller or bigger. I want to have a nice smooth transition. So let's add a transition. So this will take whatever property we want to add the transition to, which in this case is the width, the duration I want it to last, which is 0.6 seconds and the effect, which is linear, it's gonna be the same speed throughout. All right, so now let's start to do the, the uh, UL, the unordered list, so we'll say nav UL. And for this, I'm gonna display flex, which makes it a flex container, makes all the list items flex items that will turn into a row. We wanna get rid of any bullets, so list style type, we're gonna set that to none. And then let's go ahead and just remove any default margin and padding. Oops. Okay. And then what else do we want to do here? So the width, the width for this, the initial width is going to be zero. And the reason for that is when when it's not active, we want the width of it to be zero. Alright, now. We want to add a transition for the width here too. So let's say transition on the width and it's going to be 0 0.6 seconds linear. Now when it's active, let's say when the nav tag has a class of active, which it does now, we want the width of the UL to be 100%. Oops, sorry, I'm going to put UL. Okay, so we'll have the width at 100%, and then I think that's all we want there. So let's do the list items. So we have our nav UL list items, and remember we want we want them to have that rotate effect. So what we'll do is we'll use transform, and we can use rotate on the y axis. And we'll start here with zero degrees. And I'm going to change that for the act for the um, active state. We'll go ahead and add that. And by default, the opacity is going to be zero, which is going to make it just disappear. And that's fine because we only want it to show when it has the active state. And then I want to add a transform, I'm sorry, a transition for the transform property for the rotate because we want it to have that smooth rotation. You can see the, the LIs have that rotate. And also for the opacity, you can see how they fade in and out nice and smooth. So what we'll do is add transition on transform. And let's do 0 0.6 seconds linear. And then I'll also add it onto the opacity property which will be 0 0.6 seconds duration and linear. All right, 
and then let's see. So when it's active, we should see it. So let's say nav active, and we want to target the li when the nav is active, and set the opacity to one so we can see it. And then we also want to set the transform to uh, rotate y, and we're going to do. 360 degrees. We just wanted to do a, a full 360 spin. You can see when I save, it actually shows us the transition or the rotation, I should say. All right, now the links don't look too good, so let's make those look a little better. So we'll say nav ULA, and we want to position these to be relative. And the color of the links I'm going to set to black. And I'm going to get rid of any underlines, so text decoration. What is this? Text decoration, we want that to be none. And then I'm just going to separate them with a margin on the right and left of 10 pixels. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, so I think what we'll do is stop here, and then in the next video, we'll go ahead and style the icon or the button, the button with the class of icon, put the lines in there, and we're going to add the rotation transform for that, and then we'll add the JavaScript with the event listener. Alright, so we'll get to that next. Alright, in the last video we went ahead and created most of the styling. We have our background gradient, we have our little nav bar here, now we want to do the icon, which is a button with the class of icon. So let's go ahead and do that, we'll add in icon. And we're going to set the background color to white, which is the same as its, as its uh, container there. And then we want to get rid of that border as well. So we'll set that border to zero. So now we essentially can't see anything. Um, and then we're going to set the cursor to a pointer so that when we hover over it, we get that cursor. We want to set any padding to zero. We're going to position this relative because the lines inside are going to be positioned absolute and we're going to set the height and the width both to 30 pixels. All right, we can't see anything just yet. Um, one thing that I want to get rid of is this outline on the focus state. So we'll say icon colon focus and we want to set the outline to zero. Okay, now we want to style the lines. Remember, there's two divs inside the button with the class of line. So we want to style that. So let's say icon line. And we'll set the background color. And we'll set that to hexadecimal 5290F9. And we want to set the height. So they're just going to be two lines, so we'll set two pixels to the height. So we have two two pixel lines. Now we want to position this to be absolute. And actually let's put our width as well. So the width is going to be 20 pixels. And we position absolute. Now we want to move this from, let's say from the top, 10 pixels, and from the left, 5 pixels. So this is the top line. Now both of them are in the same exact spot right now because they both have the, the line, the class of line, which we just put in the same position. So what I'm gonna do is right underneath, let's say icon, and then we wanna take line two, and we wanna move it down. So we can actually use auto for the top, and from the, let's say from the bottom, 10 pixels. Okay, so now we have two separate lines. Now up here, uh, let's see what else do we want to add? We want to add a transition. Actually, we'll wait. We'll have to do the transition after. Let's do the rotate. So remember, when we click on, when it goes from an X to the two lines, we want them to rotate. So we're going to go down here, and they need to rotate in different directions. So we want to say nav, and when it's active, uh, we want to take icon, and we want line one first. So take line one and let's add a transform so that we can rotate and the degrees is we're going to do a negative 765 
degree rotation. And we also need to add translate Y for the positioning, and that's gonna be 5.5 pixels. All right, and then what I'll do is just copy this whole thing. And this is gonna be for line two, and this is gonna be positive 765 degrees. And then this will be negative, because we want them to go in a different way. So save that, and now we have an X. Now, when, they, when it changes, we need to have a transition. So let's go uh, back up to here, to the line class. And let's add a transition. We want to put it on the transform property. Everything is 0.6 seconds. Of course, you can change that if you'd like. Linear. And you can see when I save, and that's applied, you can see the uh, rotation. So the last thing we have to do now is the JavaScript, which is very, very, it's only, I think, like five, five, six lines. Basically, we just need an event listener on this button so that when we click it, the active class is toggled. So let's go to our script and let's say const toggle and set that to document dot. And we're going to use get element by D to pull in the ID of toggle, which is the uh, button right so we have this ID of toggle so we're grabbing that we also want to grab the nav by this ID so let's say const nav document dot get element by D and we want the nav okay, and then what we're gonna do is take the toggle and we're gonna add an event listener onto it because we want to listen for a click we'll pass in click and then we have a function which you can write out like this, or you can use an arrow function, which is what I prefer. So we can get rid of that, and then just add an arrow. Okay, and then we're going to take the nav, and we're simply going to toggle the active class, meaning that if it's applied, it will remove it. If it's not applied, it will add it. So let's take the class list, and the class list you can do add if you want to add a class. You can do remove to remove one, or you can do toggle, which is what we need. I want to toggle the active class. All right, now with arrow functions, if we only have one single line like this in the function body, we don't even need these curly braces. We can just do that. I mean, you don't have to, but I don't know, it's shorter, it's cleaner. So let's try this out. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click this. And there we go. So all the transitions are applied including the rotation of, of the icon, the rotation of the rotation and the opacity of the links. You can see they spin and they fade in and out. The width of the, uh, the container here. So all these transitions are applied when that class is added and removed. All right, so that's pretty much it. Pretty simple project. Um, you could integrate this into your website or your app, your mobile app, whatever it is that, um, that you want to use it with. But that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.